Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce, and today we're doing another indie horror spotlight. Today I have with us, he's an indie horror director, and he has an amazing short that I had the pleasure of seeing that's called The Perfect Ensemble. I have with us today, he's the writer, director, and producer, Terrell Dorsey. Terrell, welcome to the Horror Room. Hey, thanks for having me, man. I'm glad to be here. Pleasure to have you on, man. <laughs> so, so tell everyone a little bit about The Perfect Ensemble. Okay, well, The Perfect Ensemble is pretty much a slasher film, but it gets a little deeper than that. Um, What goes on is that uh, there's, you know, just your typical serial killer that's out, and he's going out trying to get particular, you know, victims and everything like that. But there's a little premise behind his madness of what he's trying to do. You see... um, his latest victim is just a regular woman in her house, you know, not paying attention to, you know, to anything. She's just kind of going to her laptop, but the news is pretty much saying how there's missing people and everything like that. But she doesn't realize that (laughs) she's actually his next victim. And the premise that came with this is a little bit unique in its way because, um, you know, this serial killer, he actually doesn't kill just for <laughs> just your regular typical, you know, just wanting to kill or anything like that. It's actually a need for him. So, you know, once you practically see, you know, typically at the end what's going to happen, then you're going to actually see the need that he really needs, you know, for him. Basically, you know, to complete his ensemble, quote unquote. So. And this is and. And what's great about this story is it probably giving anything away, of course. Um, most serial killers, you know, I've done a lot of research on serial killers, and one thing it is what, especially when men, when it comes to men, serial killers is brought about through trauma. Like mm-hmm. there's something traumatic happens to them at a young age, and it kind of steers them into that direction. And 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 this killer, you know, you get to see a flashback of him at a young age you get to see that trauma mm-hmm. that causes him to be who he is mm-hmm. yeah exactly because you know like for me to actually get into that type of realm i actually had to contact a friend of mine who is a psychologist so they pretty much helped me write exactly how to set off you know a serial killer's mentality you know and to me, that was perfect because they actually told me it does start at a young age, typically between the ages of five and seven, because from that is, you know, it's at the point where they're, you know, if something was to happen, they're scared to tell their parents, but then mm-hmm. they're scared to disappoint somebody. Correct. So that's why I thought it was so perfect to use that, you know, that age to depict exactly the trauma he went through to turn him what he turned it to. Exactly. But at, at, the, at the same time, he also has a weird love and fascination from where that trauma stems from. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, like you, you saw the film, mm-hmm. um, you know, he's trying to be perfect, you know, even at a young age, you know, he's, I mean, I could say it, he's, he's a prodigy, you know, yes. he's a prodigy. But not only that, you know, it's also he doesn't want to disappoint his teacher. Mm -hmm. And, you know, his teacher is she's just just obsessive as he is, you know, probably even more. And, you know, it actually depicts their relationship is even at his young age is a little weird with some of the movements that she does and he does. And, you know, some of the things that she says and, you know, some of the things that she tries to put into his head. And she tries to make it seem like it's just their world, you know, like they j- they're the only ones that really understand about that perfection that they're trying to get. But don't you think I mean, I mean, you're a male, I'm a male and and like, but don't you think I mean, in real life when it comes to sports, it comes to music, there is a there's a credible amount of pressure oh, yeah. on young boys. <laughs> And mm-hmm. like I know, I know women will say, "What is pressure putting girls?" But no, 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 it's a different kind of pressure. It's a, it's a aggressive, mean kind of pressure, tough mm-hmm. pressure. 
was put on young boys to succeed in whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because a lot of times, you know, whoever's putting that pressure on is trying to live through that person, you know, through that child. And that's what I kind of wanted to depict. That's exactly what I wanted to depict, you know, that, you know, it just stems from a line, you know, and, you know, that pressure that got on to the, you know, the main killer, it just, it, it just went a different, totally different way. Yes. And it just, it just went to the stratosphere where he just took it to another level. Now, now, this is a slasher film, but it, it, it but it's a unique slasher film in some yeah. way because it has a unique. The killer is unique. It's a unique killer, and the way he kills is definitely unique. Um, so, what gave you some ideas on? You know what? Let me go towards like the music realm of killing. Okay. Well. <laughs> I actually, um, before I started doing film, I actually did music. Like I was a music producer. Um, I helped a lot of people, you know, do their music, hip hop, um, R and B, and you know, it did really well for a little while. But then things started kind of turning off, and I've always had a love for it. Not only that, my family, you know, is big into music. My mom, she plays piano. My sister, she plays, um, you know, um, the bass. She's actually in the film, and um. You know, so I have a music and I used to play percussion and the drums. I I played all through middle school up into high school. So, you know, I'm musically inclined with that. So with that being said, I was thinking to myself, because I'm the type of person that, you know, I want to do something that's different. You know, I want to create something that hasn't really been seen like that to kind of, you know, stand to myself, you know, Mm -hmm. and being compared to this person or this director or this writer or whatever. So with my love of music, I was like, well, how would it, you know, what would relate to a horror movie that could really relate to music? And, you know, I don't know if you saw the movie, The Perfection, that's on Netflix, Mm -hmm. you know, I was like, I don't want to do it like that. I just want to do it a little bit different, take it to another level. And then you know, when I start thinking about it, what's the most important thing, you know, that a play that a person needs when he plays an instrument? It's either his lips or his hands. Correct. And then I was like, oh, man, this is perfect. You know, then I can, you know, do something with his hands. So then I was thinking, what could I do? And what would just be sick? And then I was like, oh, I got it. <laughs> then that's yeah. when, you know, I came up with the premise of what you know, the serial killer is actually going to do with his hands, you know, or what he's going to do with other people's hands, basically, or fingers or whatever. Now, I ask everybody this, whether it be a woman, Hispanic filmmaker, black filmmaker, is it hard as a black filmmaker, I'm asking them in a way, but as a black filmmaker, is it hard to not make just black films? To be honest, yes and no. Because check this out, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I've written a lot of like a lot of content. Like I've been writing since 2018. I actually started out as a writer, wow. and I and I started writing for um other people. And when I started writing, they started getting green lit for films. And then I was just like, man, I need to start doing this myself. Then, <laughs> so you know when I started writing for myself and I was having other people kind of read it and I had other producers I was working with that I've written before read it, they were like, Oh man, this is great. And then all of a sudden it came to, man, you going to be like the next Jordan Peele. And I was like, no, <laughs> I said, no, <"Nah, laughs> no, don't do that. I'm like, I'm going to be the next Terrell Dorsey, you know, because what they try to do is they try to trap you into this certain genre. And I'm like, yo, you can do more. You know, that's why, like, with my films, I don't just, you know, rely just on, you know, African-American actors or, you know, or Caucasian actors or whatever. To me, it's like this. Horror doesn't, horror doesn't have no boundaries. It doesn't matter if you're black, you're white, whatever. You're still going to get killed. You're still, something's still going to happen. Exactly. So that's how I look at it. Um, Like, people try to put me in that position but i'm like i I look broader than that because there's a much broader audience than just black 
you know, exactly. or just this, because, you know, you're, you're trying to get your idea out so people can actually see your vision. And it's not a black vision. It's not a white vision. It's just a vision. Exactly. And I 100% agree because I, I mean, once you go, I feel like once you go down that road where you become a black, a black filmmaker, there's no, you, you're, you're trapped in a box, mm-hmm. you know, and people are expecting like, I cannot see a Jordan Peele coming out with a non-black movie. Like, because people are like, wait a minute, that's, this is this is what Jordan Peele does. Mm-hmm. But like, I, I feel like when you start doing that, you're cornering yourself in a box and mm-hmm. then it's hard to get out. Yep, exactly. Because only that too, I'm not going to lie. Like, you kind of, I'm not saying no, just dis, nothing disrespectful, but you're kind of selling yourself short if you're just doing that specific audience you know you got to have it to everybody regardless so i mean there are a lot of good black filmmakers you know but a lot of times i feel like they stay in that comfort level of being you know i just want to do this and this you know but i'm just the type i'll just be like look i got a vision i don't care who sees it because I'm all about the people. I'm all about this people, this type of person or whatever. So, you know, I'm just making a horror film. It doesn't, yeah. I'm not specified for any type of, you know, ethnicity or nothing. So, you know, that's just me. I'll, I'll just make it for everybody. I'm trying to scare everybody. And that's the best way to do it. Because <laughs> horror, horror is for everybody. And like, mm-hmm. you know, like, I mean, I've tried watching black horror movies and like there are some good ones there are some good ones but a lot of mm-hmm. them feed into the black stereotype um i, right. I, I did an interview with a uh, a black filmmaker and we so we talked about how we disliked the movie the blackening so much because <laughs> it, it, it was this every black stereotype thrown in your face exactly for laughs and i i didn't find it funny no nah, like i i watched it you know like it's to me you know i give them a good effort you know, that he put in for it, but it was stereotyped, you know, and like, what's going to change? Like, that's my thing. Like, once you go see a black film, you end up knowing exactly how it's going to portray because they make the same ones. So it's like, what about the serious ones? You know, like, I love, I don't know if you saw Ganja and Hess. Ganja and Hess. No, I have not. Okay, yeah, that one. Is oh, yeah, actually... yeah, no, no, I, no, I see Gunshot. Yes, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. yeah. You know, like I love, I love something like that. You know, with serious and everything like that. But you know, just a lot of them lately have been just stereotyped, everything like that. So me personally, I'm trying to, you know, change that narrative, you know, as much as I can. That's good. So, who are some filmmakers? You don't have to say Jordan Peele, but uh, who are some? <laughs> Where's some horror filmmakers that you got inspiration from? Oh man, my biggest inspiration is Stanley Kubrick. Oh man, I just love his work. Love his work, especially with The Shining mm-hmm. and what he, did with, <laughs> what he did with Eyes Wide Shut. It's just classic. Um, I love Guillermo del Toro. You know, I love James Wan. I love John Carpenter. Um. I just, it's like, to be honest, man, it's just Stanley Kubrick to me, you know, like I I like Jordan Peele, don't get me wrong, I like him too, but Stanley Kubrick to me, you know, it's the way that he shoots, you know, it's his movements, like I just love the way that he just pans and he moves and, you know, the conversations that he has, like the type of lighting that he uses based off of you know, the conversations was what's going on in the scene. Like, it's just, to me, it's just classic. And, you know, a lot of people, they'll say, like, they like this one or like that one. But to me, I love how a horror picture can look, if it can look beautiful to me, you know, if it looks beautiful, you know, to me, it, it can it can make a difference, man. You know, just the lighting, just the way it's shot, the movements, all that. And that can that can actually bring out the suspense even more. Oh, and Alfred Hitchcock, too. I love Alfred Hitchcock. I'm going to say one thing about Cooper. I'm going to say, and, and your movie had this as well. The fucking scores. Like, <laughs> when you got the fucking music that you had the right score, the right composer, the right everything. In it, 
it builds the fucking tension in a horror movie. It actually, mm-hmm. it actually makes it even scarier. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, like when you hear some, a good fucking score throughout a horror movie, it's perfect. Oh yeah. Um, actually I got to give credit to my, um, my buddy, my engineer, Nick Murphy. We were actually working on a lot of the music together, the sound and everything together. Um, when we got done just a short film, we ended up with over 270 tracks wow. <laughs> worth of sound and music. And he did a ball and it just came out so good. Like even because we had a um, premiere for it um, not too long ago, you know, just to show people. And everybody kept saying just how they like the music and the sound was just amazing in it. Yes. And, you know, it's different from seeing it at the studio, but then seeing it in the movie theater. It, it was just crazy because, because so many horror filmmakers are focused on the look and they completely forget about the fucking sound and the sound is as important as important as the look oh yeah definitely because well you already know i got a background <laughs> in music yeah. and sound anyway so to me that was you know very important because actually that's what my instructors told me you know when it comes to film they say what's the most important thing and people think it's the lenses or the type of camera you use. They're like, no, it's the sound. Because mm-hmm. the sound can make or break a film easy. Yes. I mean, I, w- I was just talking, to, I just interviewed a composer, um, a movie composer. And, you know, I was just talking, I was like, you know, in the 80s, I, I grew up in the 80s. And in the 80s, you know, the action movies, the, the horror movies, they all had the sound was, if you watch an action movie, Right now, if you play an 80s action movie like score, you'd be like, that's Terminator, that's Bloodsport, that's oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Elder Hill Cops. You play a score, you know, from any horror movie from the 80s, you'd be like, that's Halloween. That's and that's oh, not yeah. something that's been missing, I feel like, in filmmaking is that the sound, the score, the music is something that's so important because it, it the, the movie watcher like myself. It gets us pumped up. It gets us scared. It, it gets us ready for whatever is going to happen. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I grew up in the 80s, too. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So I know about that. Like looking at Halloween, um, Friday the 13th, um, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Phantasm, Hellraiser, all of them. Like mm-hmm. there's always that signature music, you yes. know, that and, you know, is then that's when you're just like, oh man, he's coming or you something's about to something. come out. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, I've I grew up in all that. So that's why I try to depict that and give respect to, especially um John Carpenter. Oh, John he, Carpenter. He made a lot of great fucking amazing great music. <laughs> I'm telling you what, right now, watching a Halloween movie, my fucking spine fucking tingles and I fucking get start getting goosebumps right here. Ding, 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 ding. The, the Halloween movie, and then all of a oh, sudden, yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you hear that, uh-huh. that slide across the fucking the, across the keys. That, yep. That's when you know Michael Myers is about to fucking come out. As uh-huh. soon as you hear that slide across the fucking keys, you know that Michael Myers is gonna and it gets you fucking like, right. <laughs> yeah, it gets the shit out of you. Oh, and that's yeah. something, and, and, and that's something you're scared before Michael Myers even fucking comes out. You know, mm-hmm. you know something's gonna happen. And and I feel like you know newer horror movies. Like you, you look at the Scream movies. There's been like six or seven. There's been six of them. There's no music for Ghostface. You know what I mean? He doesn't no. have sound to to get you prepared for him to come out and kill you. Right. Yeah. Because you know, I guess you know with these other filmmakers, man. You know they're trying to get the scares. You know they're trying to get some of the gore. But like I said, to me the sound is just so important. It's what gets people out of the seats. Yes. You know, it, it's the jump scares. It's, you know, I don't know. Like, like I said, man, me, like when I'm putting a film together, I, I put every aspect, like when I'm put, when I put this film together, I was up till like two or three o'clock in the morning, you know, going piece by piece, sound by sound, you know, and scene by scene, okay, I think this looks good. I think this sounds good. I think this sounds good. And then trying to do the comparisons, you know, that takes a while. And, you know, you have an appreciation of that because you got to put yourself in the spectator's shoes 
that's what I always do when I put a film together. I'm like, okay, do I think this might scare them, or do I think this might like catch them by surprise or anything like that? You know, and you like a lot of filmmakers. To me, you got to make it personal. You yeah. know, once you put yourself in the position of the audience who's watching it, then you'll probably see even a difference of even how you make films because that's what I did. Something else that I want to bring up when it comes to sound. When it comes to the fucking gore, that fucking, the sound even of that Mm -hmm. is important. Like, um, giving away anything, like like the hammer hitting the hand and the skin tearing. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) But that shit right there will make you go, like, and like, like, that is so fucking important. I mean, it's, it's not even what you see, it's what you fucking hear. If you hear it, exactly. it, it, it fucks you up. Oh, yeah. Trust me, like, when we had the premiere, like, after it was um, finished and we were taking a break, I was asking the people what they, you know, what they felt about it. A lot of them said, like, during the, the scene with the, I'll just say with the saw. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, a couple of people said that they had their, you know, their eyes covered or whatever, but it didn't help because they was hearing everything yeah. that was going on the regardless. Bones cracking and the skin <laughs> exactly. like shit. But, That's what I said. Oh, shout out to my my engineer, man, Nick. He, he good job, he, buddy. He mixed that thing together, man. <laughs> yeah. Now, hey, have you thought about making this into uh, a feature link? Actually, yeah. Um, you know, and left it open ended. So yeah, um, I actually have it half written, and um, a lot of people afterwards, like I actually had other, you know, people come to me saying, "Man, what happens next?" and everything like that, and even people guessing, like at the end. Well, I'll just say this: at the end, it was like, "Who was clapping at the end?" And I was like, "That's actually part of the feature film." They were like, "What?" And I was like, "Yeah." So I thought about it. Um, you know, I want to do it. You know, it just depends on the timing because right now it's going through the uh, festival circuit right now. Okay. And, um, you know, we're trying to, you know, get some people into seeing it first. And then from there, we'll we'll see if, if we can make it a feature or we might turn it into something else. So we'll just wait and see. I would definitely watch a feature thing. <laughs> that. If, if you can replicate that in a feature link. But I, I hear that from filmmakers, it's hard to adapt a short film into a feature length. Sometimes, you know, you have a great short and then the adaptation of it into a feature length doesn't have that same energy behind it. Right. Well, it to me, it just depends on how, you know, how you want to use the main villain for the story to me. Like, how far do you want to take it? Like, that's that's just me. So with me personally, like with making it a feature film, um, I already know exactly how to, like what I want to do with the main character. Like, you know, with the main villain, do I want to do more kills? Do I want to do more, you know, more <laughs> kills that are like to the yeah. point where, you know, well, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, you know, re- like <laughs> really detailed, but it's crazy because the short film we actually left out some stuff due to time, you know, mm-hmm. time restraints. So the kills that I actually wanted to do, we we couldn't even do. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, there was one brutal one. Oh man, it was so brutal, and my um my special effects guy um is actually. My effects guy from New York, his name is, uh, he goes by Dead, Mr. Dead. And, man, he he did one crazy good job, man. And he, we were setting up for the kill that we were going to do for the main character. Mm-hmm. But I was like, man, we're running out of time because where we were at, we only had like a couple hours. And I had to get him back to New York. And I was like, oh, man, I really want to do this kill because we were using a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, man, I was like, I don't got time. And then, you know, everybody was tired and everything. And mm-hmm. he was run, he was starting to, you know, run out of blood and out because we was just using so much all weekend. So <laughs> it's a lot of fucking blood in this movie, man. It's a lot of. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, um, but yeah, you know, with like, I could actually take those and put them in a feature, you know, I've, yeah. I've already got like so many kills that I want to do for the feature and I already you know I want to do it so I want to lean towards it you know trying to garner an audience you know with it so it can be like the next you know main villain so just I'm waiting to see I'm looking forward <laughs> to it all right so Terrell how can everyone find you okay well we have a website you can go on um our website with uh with my production company with my partner shamar and my partner um john uh they can go on www.film81productions.com we also have a youtube page um snapchat TikTok um page and also you could go on to my facebook page um just put Ter um terrell dorsey it'll actually pull up and we also have some behind the scenes footage of when we were putting the film together that people can check out also on my Facebook page. So, yeah, you know, we got a lot more content coming out soon, too. Awesome. Well, listen, go down to the description box. The, the link to the website as well as the YouTube is down there. Terrell, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on, man. Let's see. You're more than welcome to come back on anytime. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it, man. No oh, problem, my friend. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for coming to the Horror Rim. I'm Travis Bruce. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.